Hey, BC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is just going to be a quick video just showing a few new things. Uh, really only kind of one vinyl, mostly CDs, but again, just kind of new music, stuff that's been coming in, stuff that I've listened to over the past, um, you know, I guess really kind of few days, week or so that I've gotten, gotten a few new things in. So, uh, again, not as much vinyl, but music all the same, so I just kind of go through and share it with you really quick. We'll start off with what's listening in the background, which is really the one new piece of vinyl that I've gotten, and it is this right here, what is, which is the Buena Vista Social Club at Carnegie Hall. A uh, really interesting album, actually, it, or at least kind of story in my music-slash-vinyl life. Because this store, this FYE I used to shop at when I used to live back in in Columbia, it was a, uh, this is an album that was kind of just, you know, in the stacks for quite some time. And I would go in there all the time and I was always flipping through and just, I'd see it all the time, you know, the cover always kind of caught my attention, but I had no idea who it was or anything like that, so I just kept kind of skipping over it. And usually the price on it, it was like $29 or something like that. So I just never paid attention to it. Always forgot to look it up when I went back home. And then somewhere along the line, maybe a year or so ago, I got the CD. I found it like a dollar or so somewhere. And listened to it and was just like, you know, this is just really, really good stuff. And so with all the sales that had taken place at that FYE and, you know, buy one, get one half and the 50% off sales they had before they closed, I was just like really kicking myself in the rear for not picking it up, even though I didn't really know it back then. So I was just kind of wandering around the store the other day and saw this one and it was 25% off of an already lowered price. And so I was like, well, holy cow, just for a few bucks, I'll grab it. I was pretty excited about it. So I picked it up. Really, really good stuff. I mean, kind of a combination when you listen to it from front to back. Some stuff that's very kind of a, has a very strong Latin feel. Stuff like this. Even though they're kind of singing it in Spanish or whatever, it still sounds a little more country. But uh, again, just a great mixture of a lot of different genres of music you can feel come through their performance. But a really, really great album to have. The other thing I really liked about it, too, is it's a fantastic pressing. It's actually a trifold, but I, well, I guess I can go ahead and take it out of the... It, it's a really, really good pressing in the sense that... Let me grab the first record here. Hold on one second. There we go. You know, it comes in the really hip, heavy poly sleeves, which I really like. But it's a very, very nice... 180 gram vinyl pressing. It's one of those pressings that the minute I pulled it out, I knew it was going to sound fantastic. You could just, you could just tell that it was going to feel fantastic or sound fantastic, and truly it did. This is one of those vinyl pressings where when you start trying to show someone or let someone know why you prefer the sound of vinyl over a CD or digital and so forth, this is one of those albums that will kind of show that and prove that that fact to you and to others I think so a fantastic pressing and again it's a uh, nice trifold here kind of a shot from the stage at Carnegie Hall so really really cool stuff one of those really great albums to kind of put on the background while you're just kind of chilling out or doing things around the house let me set that over there. So that's really the one vinyl that I picked up. Everything else was kind of CDs. Uh, and typically when I get CDs, I usually tend to get them in bunches. Mainly because um, I'm very much a bargain shopper when it comes to CDs. I um, you know, always like my CDs to be in very good shape. I don't buy stuff that's really scuffed up and you know all that kind of thing. But at the same time, I'm just not the kind of person that just on a regular basis is willing to go out and spend really kind of five, six, seven, eight plus dollars on a CD. I just, I, I, I don't, I don't have enough in me to spend that kind of money there. I would much rather go find a vinyl for 12 or 13 dollars than to pay nine dollars for a CD of the same album. So when I do find stuff very cheap, or maybe I'm paying 
three dollars or so. It usually tends to be when I find different lots, like on eBay or sales and stuff like that. So ran into a couple of good sales here and picked up most of these for about three dollars a piece. So I'm even a little bit cheaper than that. But uh, yeah, I just I just I cannot spend a lot of money on CDs. Somebody just drives me crazy. Matter of fact, I'll start out with this one. Um, well, actually, I think that. Yeah, no, that'd be a good place to start. Let me find it. I'll just kind of skip forward some, because this is kind of a prime example. This CD is somewhat of a grail for me, not in that it's hard to find. I've stumbled across a bunch of copies all over the place, but they were always $15.99 or $17.99. And again, I will not pay that much for a CD. It's just, I, ju I just won't, unless it's some box set type thing, or maybe if Metallica or Godsmack comes out with a new album, and the price is $15.99, I'll pretty much, you know, pick that up first one I see, no questions asked. But, again, for me to spend 15 bucks on a CD is just a kind of a uh-uh. But, uh, and, and every one I've always found has been that much. But I found a used one on sale, actually, at a very, very decent price for only a few bucks, so I ended up picking it up. But I've wanted this for so long, so I was so happy to find it. And it's uh, Israel, and I, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce the last name, so I won't butcher it, but you can actually kind of see it right there. But I, I have wanted this CD for the longest time, and I first discovered him, of course, through his cover of Somewhere Over the Rainbow that he does. I mean, kind of that, you know, big, huge, Samoan kind of guy, but with that very light, kind of floaty, Hawaiian-type voice. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful, actually. So I finally found this at a very, very good price. And this album is uh, Facing Future. And just really, really good stuff. A lot of different things on here, too. Just, again, it's a very pleasant album to listen to. So I was really, really happy to find that. Some other really good finds. Wayne Shorter, Juju. I do have it on vinyl, but finally found it on CD. And... Uh, Again, a really good price, and of course, I mean, I always love everything on that Blue Note label. Never get tired of that. John Coltrane, Blue Train, another one I've had on vinyl for quite some time. Actually, one of the first John Can John Coltrane albums I ever bought. Uh, I think I bought it about. Ugh. It's crazy with all the records that I, you know, that I have. It's just so easy to remember. I bought John Coltrane back in 2006 in Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just, that's just, that amazes me sometimes, it really does. But uh, nice to pick up the CD as well. Another good one that I had on vinyl, but finally got it, my hands on the CD. Hank Mobley, this is Workout, another classic right there. That's another great great pickup and again all of these for about two or three dollars each so really good stuff another gentleman I've mentioned a few times and I'm trying to start to get into which is Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers this is Mosaic I knew I would like this one too because when I looked on the cover uh, and I saw Freddie Hubbard and Wayne Shorter were on this as well as a few others so I kind of knew automatic that's going to be good stuff, not to mention Art Blakely. <laughs> so I uh, was actually listening to this this morning, so really, really good stuff. This is one of, I think, Herbie Hancock's best works, and especially kind of in his earlier jazz years. Speak Like a Child. I mean, it, again, just really shows his genius on this album. You know, he had that time period where he was... You know, doing the Miles Davis and uh, John Coltrane thing, and then his regular jazz thing, and then when he got into his funk stuff, and uh, you know, and then just stuff you used to call Herbie Hancock, I don't know what label you can put on it, then into his 80s stuff, and on and on and on. But I think this was kind of one of his uh, best time periods. This is like when all of his genius in my mind was really coming through. And Speak Like a Child is a fantastic album. I mean, if you like just some nice traditional type jazz, but yet a flavor that can go all over the place, that is an album for you right there. And I don't have it on vinyl yet, so it was also nice just to actually get a copy of it, period. The 
Heat Brothers, another trio I wasn't exactly familiar with, but saw this from like a little bit over a dollar, I think, and picked it up. And again, very good stuff, just very nice traditional jazz. And uh, again, you listen to it all the way through, it takes a number of different flavors on as they go through, but a, a very, very smooth traditional jazz. The way it was recorded, too, uh, just a very nice, crisp, like, hi-hat sound. I, I don't know, it's kind of hard to, hard to explain, but it's a great CD. Now, switching gears away from jazz a little bit, Loretta Lynn, Coal Miner's Daughter, another great find. I have the Coal Miner's Daughter soundtrack, but pretty much Sissy Spacek, who played her in the movie, did all the tracks on that, so it was nice to kind of have a lot of the same things with Loretta actually singing it herself. So, again, a lot of great stuff on here, you know, Coal Miner's Daughter, uh, you're looking at country, they don't make them like daddy anymore, you ain't woman enough, so, uh, Fist City... <laughs> Cracks me up. There seems to be a lot of songs by her where she's talking about beating up a woman or threatening to beat up a woman because she's trying to take her man. So uh, I don't know what kind of stuff she had to deal with, but who'd want to leave Loretta? She's a hottie. Look at her. She was like, what, 90 right there? (laughs) But I love Loretta Lynn, so another great find. This next band here is one that I kind of decided I want to collect the entire uh, discography of, especially since I was so close. So I really only need two more albums by them, but let me show you the other ones I picked up here to kind of work towards that completion. You got Kitty, which is Funeral for Yesterday. Very nice kind of two CD set, although it's actually, I should say, one CD, and then the second disc is actually a DVD with some, you know, interviews, behind the scenes footage, blah, blah, blah. So that was one that I needed for my uh, Kitty collection. I also picked up Oracle, another very good album. This is from 2001. Great album here, too. Favorite songs on here are probably uh, Mouthful of Poison as well as Run Like Hell. Those are two really good tracks. But uh, again, it's kind of a 2001 release. I do have In the Black on vinyl, but I did also just find a nice CD on eBay at a good price, so I ordered that. So all I need now to complete their collection is the um, their most recent one, the one that came out like a year or two ago. Uh, cannot think of the name. I can actually see the cover in my head too. It's like an off-white type cover with this like skull type thing in the middle. Anyway, so I need to find that one at a decent price. Because again, I'm not going to pay fourteen dollars for it. Um, but I also picked up this nice EP that I found, which is paper the Paper Doll EP. And it has the single Paper Doll and then five live tracks of songs like Spit, which is one of my favorite songs by them. So another really, really good find. And then I also picked up Safe, another kind of EP. It has a couple of different versions of the song Safe and then also like more live tracks and stuff like that. So. So good stuff there. I'm glad I'm almost have a complete collection of them. Another one I've been wanting for quite some time. Found this for three dollars, so another great pickup, which is yes, 90125. Had this vinyl for quite some time, but again, very nice to finally find the CD. Another one, Sepulture. Another nice three dollar find. And that's Roots, of course. So it's nice to have the vinyl and the CD there as well. Another group that I'm starting to work on getting a complete collection of, too, is Zayo. And this is their self-titled album from, what year was this? 2000? You know, a very, very heavy metal group. And a, a very heavy metal group that has the right moral compass, which is always nice to see. So, another good pickup there. And last but not least, uh, this is one I found for a dollar. Uh, had no idea what it sounded like. I mean, I'm very familiar with Dope. I have a couple of their albums, but just, just never heard this one. And this is something Revolutionaries. What's it called? Felon and Re- Revolutionaries. 
And I have listened to it all the way through. Definitely some good stuff. Not their best album, in my opinion, but still, you know, their same traditional kind of hard, in-your-face rock slash metal delivery. Um, so yeah, definitely a, a decent album there too, especially for only a dollar. Great album. So anyway, there you go, VC. Again, just sharing a few new musical things that have come in. And as always, let me know what you think, and we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.